Breakfast. Let's talk politics with the Green Party co-leader, Russell Norman. Good morning to you, Russell. Good morning, Lamo. How's it going? Very well. Um, you had a week off last week. Good good week off? I did. I had a break. It was fantastic. Did you get out of the country? Yes. I did. I was in Vanuatu, which was amazing. Oh, lovely. I love it. You didn't go and visit the volcano, and I saw a, a, um, a piece on one of the current affairs shows of the volcano there um, on the weekend. Um, the, the guy's a Kiwi guy traveling to the right to the to the crater. Yeah, it's um, it's one of the one of the amazing things about Vanuatu. We didn't get there, but yeah, the, that active volcano you can get quite close to it. <laughs> yeah, insane stuff. Hey, back here at home though, uh, Nick Smith this morning is quoting a um a study that says New Zealand's air quality is the best it's been in the past ten years since they started taking records, um, in two thousand. Um, have you heard much about that study? Um, I, I haven't, but we've been engaging with Nick Smith about the, the way he's been weakening the standards around air quality. Because ah. um, uh, one of the first acts he did as Minister for the Environment was to weaken the air quality standards. Because he says, he says they've been toughening them. <laughs> so so um, when he got in, there was, a, there was a national environmental standard on air quality which required all of our cities and towns to meet air quality standards within certain time frames and he basically weakened or abolished it altogether i mean he's just basically he fundamentally changed the rules um a lot of councils had made a lot of progress on it so christchurch city council and, and regional council in particular um in cleaning up christchurch's air um but uh, other councils had been dragging their feet particularly in the hawks bay yeah um and so uh, what nick did was he lowered the bar to suit the hawks bay um, and it meant that we just have a much lower bar on air quality than we had when the government started. So in practical terms, that means um, you know we have a higher threshold for particulates in the air? It means, it means that we've given um, our councils uh, more time uh, to meet um, the standards that they should have. So you know, currently we're killing about 400 people or so a year um, through um, air quality or you know, air pollution. Um, and so we basically said that can carry on, whereas the idea was that we would clean it up, so we'd stop killing people that way. Yeah. So when Nick Smith says it's the cleanest it's been since 2000, that's really a worthless claim, is that right? Well, I mean, I, you know, I'd have to have a look at it more closely, but the thing is is that we do have problems with air quality, um, and those problems are resulting in a lot of premature deaths. Uh, and... And his, you know, the, one of his first actions was to weaken the standard uh, around air quality. Yeah. Well, at the same time, of course, as there's the air, we require clean water. Um, uh, the Greens this morning are highlighting the fact that the government's paying uh, money to clean up waterways, but also at the same time offering more um, subsidies for irrigation. Mm. It's a, it's a, it's quite a, it's, it's a bizarre situation in a way. Um, every scientific study says intensive agriculture is causing the water pollution, so we know the cause. So the government says, yeah, we're going to have a lot more of it. They're talking about a, maybe a million more cows funded with about $400 million of taxpayers' money to subsidise it. So on the one hand, we're going to subsidise more pollution. On the other hand, the government's um, crowing about the fact that they're spending more taxpayer money cleaning up water pollution. Mm. So they're, they're both creating it and cleaning it up. Um, it's a, I guess it's a make-work scheme for, for government spending, but it's particularly and ridiculously absurd. Mm. Um, what do you make of, I think it was the Fairfax um, poll uh, results, I think over the weekend or thereabouts, that um, looked at um, the policies of, uh, of the two sides, mainly Labour and, and National, and um, it saw that most people preferred Labour policies but will vote National regardless. <laughs> um, and it didn't really look at the Greens, but you could probably lump sort of the Greens in with that Labour side of things with the capital gains tax and, and, and whatnot. Um, where are voters' heads at, Russell? Uh, I, I, I think it's, um, you know, I mean, there's no question that for a significant chunk of voters, it's about personalities, um, and that's obviously John Key. Uh, so, do, you uh, find, John Key do, do you find John Key sexy, Russell? Because um, that's apparently what all the ladies in the survey found him. It's sexy. So I'll vote for him. He's sexy. Well, uh, well, um, I, I think it's uh, it, it's good good that people find the prime minister sexy um, <laughs> and it? that they like him as a person. I think that's fantastic. I really do. But um, <laughs> I'm not sure that should be the basis on which we should vote for political parties. <laughs> no. um, but but you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's just <laughs> there's other things to politics as well. And and when John Key makes you poor, 
um, he might be a nice guy when he does it, but um, you're still poor. But, does, but when you see results like that, does it make you think, oh, jeepers, why did I get into this game? Bloody, you know, uh, half half the um, half the half of New Zealanders are the Walking Dead. You know, they got you know they're, they're just not even thinking. The, the, the heads aren't even screwed on, right? There's going sixty men or vote for him. Um, you know, it just makes you go, well, what's the point? Uh, it, it can be um, a little disheartening. I think that's true. <laughs> um, but it's also true that uh, a lot of people are switched on about what's going on. Um, and as time goes by, um, the, the, the gloss of the new will, will disappear. Um, and so at that time, I think a lot more people will be open to looking at the alternatives. I mean, and it's also like um, there's some character flaws that are emerging. So the arrogance over the leaders debate, for example, where John Key says, I'm, I'm above having to debate with other mm. people except Phil Goff, um, who, who I'm, I'm wasting in the poll. So I'll debate with him. But, um, but Helen, so, didn't, you know, didn't, other characteristics will come through. Now, didn't Helen do that for the last election as well? Uh, absolutely. So, and remember, Helen was seen as, as arrogant. Uh, that was one of the things that people came to dislike about her. Um, and John Key um, is nowhere near that um, in terms of perception at the moment, but clearly it is equally arrogant that he won't stand on a platform and debate with the rest of us. Yeah, and you know how most New Zealanders will see it, that they'll go, yeah, yeah, that's right, we don't want to see him on the same um, platform as that turkey Winston Peters. <laughs> yeah, but it also, yeah, I, fair enough, but I mean, I, I, I reckon that John Key doesn't want to seem to be standing next to Don Brash, because... A vote for John Key is a vote for Don Brash, yeah. right? So Don Brash wants to launch a race war um, where we're all the white people can attack all the brown people. That seems to be what he's about. Um, and so John Key doesn't want a bar of that. But the truth is that after the election, Don Brash is going to be in Cabinet if John Key gets back in. So yeah. a vote for John Key is a vote for Don Brash, and John Key doesn't want anyone to hear that. Mm, indeed. Hey, Russ Norman, co-leader of the Greens, thanks for your time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.